Gamer Leaf, the podcast in which one man strives to level up his geekhood and helping you do the same one battle at a time. <laughs> now, let's get geeky with Gamer Leaf. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had a cow, E-I-E-I-O, with a moo-moo here and a moo-moo there, here a moo, there a moo, everywhere a moo-moo. Old MacDonald had a farm. That's very nice, Blake. I've got a, I've got a similar, similar story here if you want to check it out. This is a story, some kind of rendition, about Old MacDonald McNaughton's ambition and how it became a fabulous game. His ambition was this. He wanted to be an animal doctor of the highest degree. Alas, inexperienced and unqualified was old MacDonald McNaughton, so he hatched a plan of ingenious proportions. I shall train myself to be a vet. I'll be the best self-taught vet yet, ever yet. And off he went to Hollyhead's sanctuary, where all the animals greeted him thankfully. And the staff looked on. Was this some kind of trick? as this man approached every animal who was suffering or sick. And a strange thing occurred, which he might not believe. The sick animals, of course, were unable to speak. But to the staff's wonder and utter surprise, they really could hardly believe their eyes. Every sick animal began to mime, to tell old MacDonald that they were not fine. And as if by magic, old MacDonald McNaughton understood all the animals as if he had taught them these miming skills so he could help. They needn't neigh or meow or yelp. He just understood, as clear as day, what it was with their mimes they wanted to say. He said, What have we here? A dog with glue ear? I shall help you at once with my de-glue, no fear. And what's that T-Rex? You have swollen up pecs? I'll get some Vicks Vapo Rub onto your chest and soon you'll be feeling your absolute best. Soon, all the animals with ailments were feeling on top. The staff were so pleased they gave old MacDonald a job. So he's a number number one vet. Yes, he's reached his aim. Did that sound familiar to you guys? It didn't to me neither. That story was a lot better than the one I told. And this is a story of Animal Elements, a new game that's on currently on Kickstarter. And we're lucky enough to have on DJ Alex, who is the creator and mastermind, behind that the game is that correct is that how you fit into line with the whole thing alex yeah that's it i'd say i'm the game designer of it and i also have a few friends that have helped me along the way well there you go cool so before we get into the game and whatnot how about we rewind a little bit and we can um go back we don't have to go back all the way unless you of course you were born into tabletop board gaming but how did you get into tabletop board gaming alex so so actually i've i have only really relatively recently been involved in um, in making a game or 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 designing games in any way, but I've played uh, played family games and party style games all throughout my life. Um, obviously, the game of charades has been a uh, been one that I've I've always loved to play, and we always wanted to find ways to kind of go beyond just doing doing films and that kind of thing, and we would challenge ourselves to play more um advanced raids really so that that was was something that i really like doing um i'm also into more traditional board gaming and and card games and um and all this type of thing but um more recently party style games games that are easy to play are ones that i've been quite interested in because you can get all types of people involved in playing them Okay, cool. So, minus animal elements, um, do you have a favorite uh, game at the current time? I imagine my audience would have me t- dragged out into the street and hung if I let you pick your own game, unfortunately. <laughs> That's fine, of course. Uh, I think um, for, more recently we've been playing quite a lot of Ticket to Ride. I think that's quite a, quite a popular board game, really. Okay, yeah. I, I never really got into the um, the gateway games or whatnot. Uh, people talk about it all the time, but I have yet to play it. Um, what can if there's other people out there like me? What can you tell us about Ticket to Ride? Uh, so it's, it's fairly fairly straightforward. You 
build tracks and you 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 pull out cards which allows you to um to build build extra bits of tracks between your stations um and you can only build tracks where you've got the got the right colors of cards um and it gets interesting because um you'll be competing with different players for certain bits of track for example to get um between paris and and um and london if you're using um the the european version of the game and there's there's different versions there's ones for um for the us there's even one for india and all, all sorts of other places okay yeah it reminds me of we did play a train game however it's by columbia games it was called the last spike where you're trying to build a a train track the first one from like i want to say uh either san francisco to st louis or or maybe you go all the way back to new york i forget but you have to you, you got to be the first one to complete the track from one side of the country to the other yeah <clears throat> sounds like quite a similar type of thing really Okay, cool. Yeah, we really like that game, so that was pretty fun. So let's see here. So you like the party games or whatnot, and also Ticket to Ride. That's cool. So, so what change? So you said you changed over to the party games. Was there? A tr- or you always been involved in the party game? I think I've al- I've kind of always been into that um, into that style of game, really. Um, and it's something I've played with my friends and play with that um, play with my family as well. Cool, cool. Yeah, I'm more like the, me and my family at least, we more like the take that games and uh, beat them up, fight them games or whatnot. But uh, recently I started a game group with um, Chris, who is who runs um, the Casual Game Revolution. And um, he, um, they seem to be big into the party games. And I've also started listening to a podcast called Tuesday Night Game, put on by Tuesday Night Games. And they created a party game called, I believe it was, Two rooms in a boom. Two rooms in a boom, and they also um, have a game out there called um, Wor- World Championship Russian Roulette. It sounds like they're both party games. Nice. I think I'll have to check that out. Yeah, I really like them. They're cool. So, um, and you said you've always been a fan of charades, and um, and Doctor Seuss. Possibly, are you a fan of Doctor Seuss? Oh, definitely. Yes, I do. Do love a bit of Doctor Seuss, as as you might have been able to tell that that my little story was sort of in that style. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was excellent, most excellent, and especially with with the short notice, I, a couple of maybe possibly, hopefully it was at least a couple hours before you went to bed. I asked if you could come up with a story, and then you shoot shoot something as marvelous as that back. So that was amazing. And going on with that, um, uh, the word on the street is you have a new game on Kickstarter, Alex. What can you tell us about it? So my game is called Animal Elements. Um. And this game is is kind of a charades related game, and you act out animals that have various types of problem. Um, so you have uh, green cards, which have animals on them, and then red cards, which are the ailments or some kind of problem. The game's really easy to play. You, when it's your turn, you just take one green card and one red card. You mime your animal first, so you might have um, have a, a donkey. And then you'll mime your ailment second, which would be it could be it could be anything. It could be scared of mice or hungry or you know scared of scared of flying. There's all all types of different ailments and problems that this donkey might be suffering from. So do you have a favorite animal in the deck, is it, or is a donkey your favorite one? Um, donkey's a good one. T Rex is a good one. I think I like the T Rex and. Um, um yeah but there, there's a lot i've tried to make a lot of cards in there and um through the kickstarter project i'm gonna try and make them make the game as big as possible cool what about your favorite element uh, that's a good one um let me think oh i quite i quite like fidgety as an element because that describes me a little bit i'm quite fidgety quite fidgety so how would you do a Let's see here. You said you like the. I know uh, this is a podcast, so it being a mime and all and whatnot, it wouldn't really work for a podcast. But um, how would you um, act, go about acting out a fidgety donkey then? Yeah, well, it's kind of kind of the donkey. Donkey's fairly easy. You know, you can do, do long ears. You can get on all fours on the floor. Um, get get on the floor. You know, think um, and fidgety is fairly easy. You just sort of, you know. Um, with your fingers just kind of move just kind of move erratically with your fingers you know people get that one quite easily okay well that's good cool 
Cool beans. So let's see here. So um, what about what about? Uh, so I guess you get an opportunity. You don't have to do them both at the same time. So you get an opportunity to act out your animal and then your element. Is that correct? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, that's right. And all the other players, um, they have to guess the guess the combo. So so you can guess each each thing individually. But to win points, you need to guess um, a fidgety donkey or a a tiger that's scared of mice or a a t-rex that um t-rex that can't dance oh, okay interesting cool and it looks like you might just have a minute to do so is that right yeah so you've got a minute um but if you still have time after that minute there are extra at the bottom of each card there's an extra steel mime and this will be something related to the animal or ailment and um this uh, steel mime, if you manage to guess that, if someone guesses it, it means you can steal a card off another player, but not from the person that guessed it. Um, so there are other ways you can increase your score by um, using the steel mimes, because um, all the cards have have, uh, have a score in the top corner. And it looks like there's also some other cards as well, besides just the animals and elements. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so you've got the... Um, uh, you've got the steel, the steel mimes, and you've also got the um, power up and penalty cards in there. Um, so, if you get a power up card, it, it will give you something something that's good for you. For example, maybe it will give you an extra turn, um, or it might give you the give you the ability to to choose your own um, animal and ailment for somebody else to to do. Um, and then there's also penalty cards, and these cards um, will. If you pick one up, you, you kind of have to do it. So there might be like a forfeit where you have to try to mime with your eyes closed or lying down on the floor or standing on one leg, for example. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. So um, per se, um, we were to sit down and play this. How would um, it sound? I mean, how would it look? Well, how would it look or sound? I guess how would you do I guess there's no, not much sound in it involved because you're miming, of course. But how would you describe how to play here um, on the podcast? Well, when, when you're playing, I guess um, even though you're not allowed to speak, it it does tend to be a very a very loud game to play because everybody's shouting, everyone's trying to get get the attention um, attention of the person that's miming with their with their suggestions, and it does create a a really fun atmosphere for everyone to be around, um, particularly if you've got kids around. Obviously, as a simple game, kids really love this game. But I've also found that it works well in any situation where you have a broad range of people, really. Cool, cool beans. Um, and um, let's see here. Yeah, so that's awesome. It looks like really fun. How many cards in total will, will they get if they back the project? So at the basic level, it's going to have uh, 150 cards. Um, and, you know, if possible, we're going to try and increase the number of cards if we if we go past our funding goal. Um, gradually increase it possibly up to 200 cards uh, we'll see how things go cool that's pretty cool so um i know you're, you're probably a little bit biased seeing how it's your game or whatnot um is there anywhere else that they can um get a uh, honest review or preview about it like any youtubers or any other game reviewers that might have reviewed animal elements uh, yes if you if you check out the kickstarter page i've, I've listed a few on there um there's reviews by uh, Unfiltered Gamer, um, Goblin Gazette did one, uh, Father Geek, who does he kind of focuses on more um, more playing games with his whole family. So he's he's played the game with several groups of of his friends from gamer geeks and you know kiddie geeks and 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 this type of thing, and has written quite a nice detailed review on it um, and. Also, uh, not exactly a review, but a playthrough by a channel called Beer and Board Games, where they drink beer and play games. So you can also see it from from the perspective of, of a party game as well. Um, so, you know, you can see through these reviews that, that it, it does have an appeal to a broad range of people. I guess it's not really for serious, serious gamers that, um, that want to play, sit down and play a long a long board game but um if you want something that's light and easy to play or just to play something quickly then um then it could be the game for you cool it also looks like maybe um the board game corner of the dice tower did a re preview also oh yeah yeah that's it yeah they did it they did a little preview as well mark from from board game corner also checked it out and and played it with 
with a couple of other people on on their show so that that's also entertaining to watch cool yeah it sounds really good so um but per se somebody's falling asleep it wouldn't be because of you or your game it'd be because they're sick of hearing my voice um uh, this morning at uh, the time of this recording which is the 23rd of february we'd um record we'd already done like 27 i want to say 27 episodes this year thus far so they get a, sometimes they get a little bit tired of hearing me drone on and on but now they're suddenly jolted awake so they don't hit that oncoming traffic why should they take a chance on animal elements especially with all the other great games that are currently on kickstarter alex well <clears throat> i think it's uh i think it's definitely one you'll experience the magic of it particularly if you have uh have some kids to play it with you i've found throughout the testing that once once you get this game out you know they're they're not gonna kids won't stop pestering you to play this game um and you'll also find that it's something you can get out to play if you're if you're you know had a few drinks um you know if you just want something quick and easy and um yeah it's uh it's a hilarious one to watch as well it never feel, fails to fill a room with laughter Cool, that's awesome. So, yeah, you talked of uh, testing it and whatnot. Um, so, during the play testing of this game, was there ever anything that you had to scrap because it just wouldn't work? Yes, actually, we had um, we we used to have bonus points um, and steel points on the cards. Um, so, so you, you could uh, you, so one on one of the cards it would have a bonus and one would have a, a steel. Um, and they would, they would do slightly different things, but we found in order to increase the you know it just improved the flow of the game. It was easier if both the both the additional things were the same thing. So now both of the cards have a steel at the bottom. So that was one sort of change that we made, um, as well as making you know countless little tweaks to what's actually on the cards and to the bonus points to make it so that the game would run smoothly and that. Most people would be able to get things whilst there's still being some challenge to um, to to the different mimes that you can do. Okay, yeah, that's awesome. So, yeah, that's awesome. What about um, what makes you most proud of Animal Elements? Besides, I don't know, if I was you, I'd be really proud of that story that you did at the first of the podcast. That's a lot better than um, any any um, old McDonald's story I've ever heard. <laughs> I think I think um, I guess something that makes me proud about it is is the is the journey and and how we've taken it, how we, how we've done lots of testing and taken it to various games fairs as well um, since over the past year. I took it to the UK Games Expo, which is the biggest games fair in in the UK, um, and this was quite an interesting uh, challenge for us because we had no idea whether whether our game would be popular or if we'd just be left standing around looking like idiots in our animal onesies um and luckily that turned out not to be the case and the game was was really popular there and 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 you know kept us busy for the whole time of the uh, of the event um and it was such a success that we decided to go to Essen Spiel which is actually the largest games fair in the world um and we traveled there from England on a bit of a road trip to Germany with some friends for that um and it was also a really great experience well, that's cool. So, um, sometimes we, a lot of times we get designers on, um, and they listen to the show as well. And one, uh, one time, a designer, I believe it was Stephen Barry, who currently has a game on Kickstarter, um, that it's called, um, Infinity's Defiance of Fate. It just recently launched. And, um, I believe he asked, cause I asked, um, if somebody's listened to podcast, I asked him what they can, we can do to make it a better podcast. And they said, get some ideas and stuff on what, um, just like the, uh, mainly they were talking, he was talking about the Kickstarters or whatnot, like um, things that people can learn or whatnot. But what about going to cons with the game? What can you tell us about that whole experience and um, journey, I guess? Okay, well, I can try and give some insights to that, is that if, if you're going to a games con or something like that with a game, um, make sure that you've got, um, it, ideally, try, try and arrive with some kind of games or prototypes that you can, that you can sell because you know people will be looking to um, looking to buy something really. And it's a really good opportunity if you can bring something along. Um, and it may not be possible; it depends on your game. But for mine, we 
we we had made lots of lots of prototypes of our game to to a reasonable standard that people you know would be would be happy to buy and, and give it a try um and i guess you need to work on making like an attractive stall that's going to that's going to draw people over and not be afraid to talk to everyone that walks past i think or, or try to talk to everyone that that shows shows an interest in your stall you know if you if you just sort of sit back and and relax you know it's not it's not going to be that much of an experience you do need to um get out there a bit and engage with people which you know it, it for me involves getting a little bit out of my comfort zone it, it depends on the type of person you are but you know you, you might have to push yourself to um to interact with people more than you might expect so the, yeah that might have taken you out of your comfort zone or do you actually sleep in an animal onesie <laughs> well I, I think now it's getting to the point where i feel like um I, it's become my uniform a little bit so what animal are you alex uh well well i i go for i when when we go out to um the games fairs and stuff i've tended to wear the dragon onesie but i think i'm not much of a dragon at heart probably probably something more benign like a goat do you have a goat onesie you could trade over for next year <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to have to do that. Or combine both of them. Cool. That's awesome. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. And so it sounds like you have to be kind of like, I don't know what they have over there in the UK, but it reminds me a lot of those um, sales sales people at the shopping malls here, the, the malls, like they're trying to sell their cell phones or whatnot. They try to talk to everybody or the lotion salesman or I don't know what they if they have anything like that over there. But it sounds like you kind of have to step out of your comfort zone and try to get everybody's attention, even if you don't necessarily want to want it might even be an introvert. But it sounded like you would have to get become an extrovert to do that, something like that. Yeah, well, I wouldn't say you don't need to necessarily be a salesman about it, but you, you you know, you should you should be uh you should be very you should be keen to at least talk to people and you know tell them about your game. I think um I think uh, that's that's just something that 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 might help you out a bit. You know, just be quite um you know quite engaging with people, and I think people appreciate that. Cool, cool, being said, that's awesome. Yeah, so and wow, that's awesome, cool, and so um yeah, so that's why they should go ahead and take a chance on that. Um, that's great. Um. So yeah, it looks like a really fun game. I'm excited about it. Um, and you said you got a lot of inspiration out of um, what was it? Um, the acting charades. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Plus, are you a vet, or what do you do in real life, or or now you're just making games full time? Uh, so no, I'm, so I've, I've been. I did work for just before I came up with the idea for the game i'd been working as an english teacher and obviously um a, for, a foreign language english teacher because i was traveling abroad um and and while doing this it's it's quite normal when you're teaching english to play games in class um you know simple types of word games and to do charades and this type of thing so so i had some inspiration from that um and so that was while i was traveling um and since then uh, i now work um as a data analyst for a mobile phone company and you know that's uh that's kind of well it, it teaches me some useful skills for you know using microsoft excel and all this sort of stuff which is the other side of designing a game you need to have some kind of technical abilities as well well there you go you're kind of using your into the different jobs and whatnot to go ahead and create an awesome game that's awesome cool so i don't know if you've got a chance to listen to any of our podcasts alex but the next portion is called adventures and uh, adventures and application acquisition where we talk about an app be it for a cell phone a tablet a uh, video game or even computer it doesn't necessarily have to be related to gaming at all a while back ago we had somebody who actually had an app um, they like to travel and they um, like to take their canine or dog with them. And so they had an app. I forget what it's called, but it tells them where they can like um, places that are pet friendly, like uh, different restaurants or hotels or whatnot. Do you have an app you use a lot of that we can talk about, Alex, for a moment? Uh, that's pretty cool. Um, I, I One app that I do get out is uh, sort of in the theme of, of charades, but there's a there's an app called Reverse Charades. And uh, what you do is you um you have two teams and a player from one team has to put the phone on their head and a word will come out and come up and everyone else in the room has to act charades 
what is shown on that person's head. So that's really funny to watch because you you could have a room of five or six people all kind of frantically trying to mime something like the Olympics or something like this. So that's pretty funny to watch. Oh, well, that sounds pretty cool. Is that available? Do you know if that's available on both iOS and Android? I think it is. Yeah, I think if you search reverse charades, you'll find that one. Um, and a similar one called uh, Heads Up, which is a similar type of thing where you put the phone on your head and other people guess. Well, that's pretty cool. So, yeah, that's awesome. So, um, and is it a free or is it a paid app? I think I think it might be like a, a couple of dollars, something like that. I, I can't I can't remember exactly. I think it was on my friend's phone. But oh, there you go. Is that, that for both the charade, uh, reverse charades and um, heads up? Yeah, I think so. So you don't even have them on your phone. Well, I actually, I've only recently started using a smartphone myself but i you know i think everyone around me has got them so i'm you know i'm used to using the apps for various stuff there you go yeah i'm kind of late to the game as well i i don't know but it's almost like the whole cell phone world they're kind of forcing us into smartphones um like i try yeah you can't even buy the dumb phones anymore it seems like it's definitely the way i mean i was definitely a dumb phone user up until really quite recently now it's almost almost essential yeah, for sure, for sure. My um daughter, little uh, little leaf, or I guess she's going by bat leaf now. She's always asking if she can use my phone, and then I say, "Who are you gonna call?" And then my wife automatically thinks of the Ghostbusters. <laughs> nice, nice, yeah, classic. Cool, cool. I mean, so yeah, we don't want to keep you all night, um, or I guess not all night. We don't want to. I know you woke up extra early so you could be with us. We want to make sure you get an opportunity to maybe take an early morning nap. I don't know if you'll get the opportunity or not, but just in case, um, we'd like to give you that opportunity so we don't want to keep you all day. But minus coming over there to the UK to stalk you and see what you got going on with animal elements or anything else, other games you might have coming out in the the future after this how would people go about uh, minus coming over there to stalk you personally how would they go about finding out about you or upcoming games or animal elements so yeah you can you can follow me on my twitter which is um it is at animal elements um and i've also got i'm also on instagram um have my website and yes if you go to animal com, you can find everything there Oh, cool, cool, awesome, cool beans. And if you if you liked what you heard, um, thanks for joining us on Getting Geeky with Game Relief. If you like what you've heard, you can always go ahead and um, download more episodes. Find out we've got a bunch. Like I said before, we've got a bunch of episodes. You can go back and listen to our backlog, or continue to go ahead and subscribe on your application, or check us out on our website, which is GameReliefGo.com, kind of like Pokemon Go, but Game Relief Go and then dot com or and if you liked what you heard you can always give us a review or a rating on itunes those supposedly help us help more people find out about our applicate about our um podcast but yeah we don't want to keep you all night alex but we really appreciate you coming on getting geeky with game relief it was awesome to find out more about your game and i especially yeah i don't know i want to say not to cut anybody else down or anything but I really enjoyed the introduction. That that story was awesome, to tell you the truth. Oh, thank you very much. I'm glad you liked it. No problem. But we'll let you get back to everyday life as well as our viewers. We'll let them get back to everyday life. We really appreciate it. Okay, thanks, Blake. Lovely to speak to you. You too. It's time for <laughs> Kickstarter <laughs> Corner. <laughs> <laughs> To begin now. You heard her. It's that time again. Time for our Kickstarter corner. What do we have on the docket for you today? Well, you're about to find out, aren't you? Well, let's see here. Yeah, why don't I just get into it? We've got Centrix, a spinning, jumping, bumping, 3D tabletop game. It's a fun, friendly, frantic, unique, multi-level game. Players use card combinations in rotating rings to unlock the best route to the top. This one has about a week to go. They end on Monday the 12th of March at 9.08 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Check it out if you do want to know more about it. We did interview the people who are the creators of it. This is backed by Vagard, who is one of our Kickstarter fans, or one of our, our podcast fans. So yeah, definitely check that out. Then we've also got Palm Island. 
Palm Island, the portable card game. Take your island with you. Play anywhere with this portable deck transformer game. They are like over, what, I want to say 1,000% funded. They were going for $4,000. They're at $40,000. And they go through the 14th of March, which is on Wednesday. So check that one out. And then, yeah, that seems awesome. Check that one out. And then we've also got Chronicles of Lucky Duck Games, Chronicles of Crime. Cooperative, it's a cooperative game of crime investigation, mixing board game and virtual reality. This is also backed by one of my favorite podcasts, Alan Gerding, who does, you guessed it, if you've listened to the last couple of shows, Tuesday Night Game Podcast. They're over like over 300,000 uh, from their goal, and they've got through the 20th of March on Tuesday. So check that one out. Then we've got Ankle Biters, Pixies versus Gremlins. Pixies and Gremlins face off in this light strategy, whimsical card game. Check this one out. They're overfunded as well. I know Lady Leaf liked the art from this, and just watch the video. You might too. Then, like we mentioned before, some of the advice Stephen Barry thought would be good for our podcast. We've got his game, Infinity's Defiance of Fate, a strategic adventure game with resource management, map building, dice drafting, and infinite replay value for two to four players. And they go through the 22nd of March. Definitely check this one out. It looks really fun. I like the art for this one too, and we had him on the show as well. So go ahead and check it out as well. Then we've got I Am the Greatest Hero Edition. It's a hip pocket superhero game, card game. Fast paced play, great fun, and unique art. Each game is different. Become the greatest hero. They go through the 16th of March, which is a Friday. So definitely check that one out. If they don't make it, I hope they refund. And one of our fans, or somebody who does a show, The Mighty Meeple, who is Eric also, he did a preview of that so definitely check that out we'll probably hopefully be getting one up for you as well on getting geeky with game relief well you know what time it is it's time to get on with your everyday life time for us to get on with our everyday life so in the meantime get geeky stay geeky and bring others into the geek fold if you ever want to hear your game on here or have us have you on the show contact us Best way to get a hold of us would be a Facebook Messenger to getting geeky with Game Relief or send us an email at gamerleaf at gamerleafgo.com. That's kinda like Pokemon Go, but gamerleafgo.com. Did I already tell you to get geeky, stay geeky, and bring others into Geekfold? If not, I'm sorry. If so, I'm telling you now. So yeah, we will catch you all on the you guessed it, flip side, Game Relief out. <laughs> Gamer Leaf levels up. Tune in next week to see if Gamer Leaf's luck holds up.